Hey there, you lovely people, and welcome to some Football Manager 2022. I left the vote up to you, and you voted for Arsenal. We've gone for Arsenal. We are the Arsenal manager for this save, for this save in FM22. So one thing I wanted to go over very quickly is that in Football Manager, it can be very difficult, especially in the first season, to make transfers in or out. And you don't want to upset too many players by transfer listing them or trying to force them out. A lot of teams have already done business, so don't want to buy your players, aren't willing to put up as much money, and it can make it more difficult for you to sign players in as well. So we've got to take it a little bit easy in this first window and can maybe take a bit more action come January if we have the money. But there is a lot of transfers that I do want to make in and out, but it's just not going to be immediately possible. So we just have to bear that in mind for the beginning portion of this. But we've first we've got to deal with a few contract issues here. A few players are running out of contract at the end of the season. We'll just apply recommended action, I think, to all of these and just get them sorted. Don't really want to spend too much time fiddling about with contracts. Would rather just let the uh, assistant deal with all that and uh, hopefully no issues for now. So anyway, let's get ready to jump in to this football manager save. So we've got to look at the club expectations and it doesn't rather well, not asking for a lot they only want us to finish in the European uh, Europa League places which isn't a huge amount court finals of the of the FA Cup they're not asking for a lot from us here so I'm gonna pretty happily accept what they want from me so going through the team very quickly Arsenal have actually got quite a good young team on paper in terms of what their squad could potentially achieve so we've got uh, Ramsdale and Leno in goal. So we'll we'll keep both of those really. I probably will move, want to move uh, Leno on, but for now, it's not really worth doing and upsetting people. So we're gonna put a couple of players onto the transfer list here. We're gonna put Rob Holding on there, who's got quite high value. So I'm just gonna offer him out to clubs with an unspecified amount of money. See if anyone wants to come in. See if anyone is uh, particularly interested in Rob Holding. So we'll uh, just do that. Uh, we'll go for, further down. See, we've got quite a good Ramsdale, Leno, Tommy Yasu, Gabriel, Holding, White, Mari. Cut players out on loan as well. Callum Chambers is one that I'm going to put onto the transfer list. I don't want to damage ourselves too much in this first season either, because it's going to be a bit of a longer form, I think. You've got Ainsley, Maitland, Nars, Tierney, Tavares, Onnini, Laconga, Partey. Yeah, I think it's going to be a much longer term save. So I want to make sure that we are not upsetting the apple cart and getting sacked quickly. We want to be here for as long as possible. Granite Xhaka is a player that oh, I don't want to get my personal feelings across for him. I, I can't stand the bloke. I think he's a, a, a terrible footballer. No idea how he keeps getting, getting a new contract, getting signed by anyone really. So I want him out. He's the one player that I want out of the club, especially because he has a decent value on paper. Erdegaard and Pepe who are very good. You've got Rowe, uh, Smith Rowe even, Martinelli, Aubameyang, Lacazette, some good options there. And Ketia I'm going to put on the transfer list as well just to see if anything would come in for him. But uh, I think we've got a pretty good starting squad for the minute. Also we need to take a look at the the uh, reserve reserve list. You've got Cedric, Suarez, Kerr, Saeed Klasnach and uh, Runison there who I'm going to move up into the first team squad but I'm also going to put them all on the transfer list as well as Asai Tutu and Dinzei they're all going to go onto that transfer list but I will move the top three up into the first team squad because I may need them for now you can see we've only got 10 million pounds so it's not a lot to work with because Arsenal have spent a lot already in this window so you start out with like a limited amount because they've already done a lot of business which could be problematic for us. I think we'll be okay, especially first season. We just need to get that top six, and I'll be pretty happy with uh, where we've come, maybe even top seven, if I'm being a, a little bit lenient. But um, we'll try and make some transfers along the way. This is the lineup I'm going for initially. It is Ramsdale, Tierney, Gabriel White, and Tommy Yasu. Sambi Lakongo, who I do want to replace and get him on the bench with next to Parte. Saka, Erdegaard, Pepe, and Aubameyang up front for the main 11. I think I am just going to stick with the Gegen press and see how that goes for now. Maybe try some wing play. And then if things are not going very well, move to a, uh, a fluid counter-attack. 
but we'll um, we'll stick with the Gegenpress press for now, and we'll see how well that can come across with the players that we have. So we do have good energy and good pace all around the team. So I'm pretty happy to stay on a Gegenpress. press. We don't want to alter the instructions too much, just because we don't want to overwork or overcomplicate the systems we already have in place. We can move things around a little bit further into the season, but we need to see how the team adjusts at first. So we don't want to play around with stuff too much. We'll drop the lines back a little bit here. But like I say, not, not too much fiddling because we just want to see how the team can actually play in the system we've created. I think this is a pretty good starting 11, especially if we can get in the man in midfield that I want to bring in. So this is the stage where we're starting to get in a few funny offers. So Rob Holding, Newcastle, mega rich known newly Newcastle, have come in, newly mega rich Newcastle is what I was trying to say, for Rob Holding for 33 million pounds, which I am going to accept because that is a fantastic offer. However, I don't see this going through because I don't think Holding's going to want to go to Newcastle when he is a regular starter at Arsenal. He's valued at 25 million pounds. Leipzig, if they did come in for him, would be a good option for him. I could see him going there. But we will accept it and hope that's going to go through. But I uh, don't really see it happening, to be honest. But um, you've got to try. I've got no option to uh, negotiate with him. It's a, uh, a, a... What's the term I'm looking for? It's a non-negotiable offer. That's what I'm looking for. And uh, yeah, we'll let him see what Newcastle uh, have to say about that one. Uh, we lose 1-0 to Roma in our first friendly, which is not the end of the world, it's only a friendly. Uh, we're struggling to get rid of a lot of players, and Xhaka is becoming the biggest problem because he's refusing to budge on his wage demands when speaking to other, other teams. Callum Chambers is also now going to be out for four weeks, which is going to hurt his chances of getting an offer. We beat uh, Raul S San Sebastian 2-0, Sacco and uh, Partey getting those, which I, th I think that's Raul Sociedad. I'm pretty sure it is. And uh, Lacazette has broken his toe, meaning he's out for seven to eight weeks, which is just so great in terms of our attacking options now. But um, Aubameyang can definitely uh, toe the line for the uh, beginning of the season. Beat Juventus 3-1, Aubameyang, Gabriel and Nketiah. Now that is an interesting result, to say the least. That does bode well for us, I'd say. And um, Cedric Suarez is now having applications for his work permit rejected to move in the country to move to either Wolves or Newcastle. They won't let him have it. And Kalasnach is having the same issue when trying to go to Newcastle or uh, Dino Kiev as well, which is not good for us. And so this is the player I've tried to bring in. is Dennis Sakaria from Munchen Gladbach. Only 5.25 million is incredible, but we've got to wait for his work permit, which means he will not be available for this first game. And this first game is against Burnley. We're in the Premier League. It is our very first proper fixture as Pepe is on the attack down the right-hand side into Warparte. It's headed away by Tarkovsky, but cleaned up there by Tierney. Erdegaard, Parte deflected. Lukonga can't quite win it, but we're going to keep this alive with Ben White. It's into Pepe. Pepe comes inside. He'll come back to him, and he'll put it in the back of the net for 1-0. I did try to rattle through that beginning bit, the admin portion, quite quickly to get to the games. Because um, that, that admin bit of Football Manager is probably one of the most enjoyable bits when you first start our new club. But in terms of watchable content, breaking it down like this for, uh, for a video, it's not the best. So we skim through it as uh, Erdegaard tries us, uh, an attempt there that's blocked. Partey getting involved again, Tierney. Turns his man. Tierney can deliver the cross in towards Aubameyang. He went it into the corner and it is 2-0 to the Arsenal. One thing that you can clearly see in FM22 is the updated engine looking absolutely lovely as well. The, the animations look so much better, so much cleaner. And it is very nice to see Aubameyang winning that header. Here's Pepe bombing down the line and Maxwell Cornet, who has already been booked, receives a second yellow card and they'll play the entire second half with 10 men. And uh, unfortunately, we're about to take off both Tommy Asu and um, Tierney at half time, both with injuries. Asaka is going to get in here for Arsenal and always oh, at the top of the crossbar. Tried the little dink there. Hopefully, they're not going to be too badly injured. We won't be able to find out until after the full-time whistle, though. There's Pepe, combines with Ben White. White sends it back to Pepe. Pepe puts it in that far corner. It's poor for the keeper. 
It's very poor from the goalkeeper and it is 3-0 to the Arsenal now. This is a great way to start off the season. You'd, you'd expect Burnley well, to be a lot more difficult, really. But um, they haven't proven to be so today. Here is uh, Nuno Tavares who had to come on for Kieran Tierney at half-time. Kaya Saka looking for Gabriel. I think this Arsenal save will be a fun one. It will be a really, really fun one. You're going to get a lot of adventures as Pepe misses that one. There'll be a lot of adventure and hopefully it'll go for at least a couple of seasons as we try to win the Premier League title and maybe the Champions League in the future as well. As the full-time whistle goes and it is an outstanding performance from Pepe and Ben White as we dispatch Burnley 3-0 on the opening day. And Tierney is going to miss at least the next two games with a gashed upper leg which isn't great for us, but we do have Tavares at least as a good option. And uh, Tommy Asu is not going to miss the next game, so he's fine. And Gabriel White and Erdegaard all got in the team of the week as well. And Sakaria has now finally arrived at Arsenal and will take the number 12 shirt. And we have agreed a really good deal for Xhaka, actually. who A future fee potentially of £10 million if they go for it. He's paying half his wages. I could only get a 15k monthly fee because I wanted to get him out for that £10 million. That was the best offer that I was getting. And it's the only club he was willing to go to, so I just went for it. And we are into our second game now. We are at Old Trafford. And we play Manchester United. And Pepe is on the attack on this right-hand side. I like to try and break these, uh, these games down just to show highlights. Sometimes I'll show much more comprehensive. Sometimes I'll show even less than just the goals. But I'll talk about that toward the end of the episode, about what you can expect from how we're going to do this uh, new series. As uh, Tavares trying to get half a yard. Combining with Sicaria. Always oh, going to get his half a yard. He delivers that one across. Ah, it's headed away. But Tommy Asu there to collect. Really big fan of Tommy Asu. I think he's looked really promising for Arsenal. Good battler. As he plays incredible ball over the top for Makayo Saka. And we're one in a bowl, Trafford. United are complaining about offside. VAR are having a check. I think he's on, you know. He's on. He is on. It's 1 0 to Arsenal. And it is at Tommy Yassi, the man I was just picking up, who plays a beauty of a ball over the top. And Saka slots it in that near corner. 1-0. Tommy Yassi with this throw in. We're into the second half. It's been a bit quiet in terms of highlights. Not really anything to show you. As Pepe makes it 2-0 and United complaining about offside again. And I don't, again, I think he was onside. I'm not sure who it was. It might even be wan Saka, but I think he was on again. He is on. It is 2-0 to Arsenal. Let's take a quick look. As Partey got the assist for this one. Yeah, he's kept on by um, right, whoever is playing right back. Kept him on there. It's 2-0 to Arsenal. And Man United have to regroup again. They have not done very well here today at Old Trafford. We have come here with a game plan. And it has worked to absolute perfection. My, my five. Well, if I say so myself. I think we've played this quite well. And they've given the ball away here. The ball's over the top for Pepe, and uh, De Gea's going to get there first. But yes, yeah, very promising opening two games so far, if we can see this one out for the win. Oh, but Ronaldo just stopped but Cavani. Greenwood gets in there, Bruno Fernandes. Oh, it's off the bar. Got away with that one. Fernandes with this corner. Oh, it's off the line, I think, and then Ben White can just hook it away. How didn't they score with that one? Here is Emil Smith Rowe, but he's going to be tackled there with Greenwood. Could be away for United. Shaw can slide it into Fernandez. Ronaldo laying it off for Pogba, who just plants it into that top corner. United have pulled one back. It's going to be a nervy final few minutes. A very nervy final few minutes. As Paul Pogba absolutely rockets one into that top corner. Basically a standing start as well. Just smashes it. And it's past Ramsdale. We have seconds remaining. We're just going to go very defensive and stay like that. And just hope we can see out this next 10 seconds or so of the match. Does the ball come forward for Fernandez? But Thomas Partey there to intercept. Ramsdale will launch it clear and surely it is all over. It is all over. We win 2-1 at Old Trafford. Outstanding performances from Tommy Asu there. And it's another three points. Two big sets of three points there. Tavares is going to miss 
the next game and possibly the next two games with his injury that he's picked up in that one. And Tommy Asu getting in the team of the week as well. And we start off this game in the cup against Exeter as Ainsley Maitland Niles almost scores a brilliant goal. This will be the final game of the episode, and then I want to talk through at the end what I'll be doing with um, in terms of fixtures going forward and how much you'll see of it. As Enketia is placed inside here, always taken out by the defender. I don't think you actually get VAR in the cup this early, do you? I don't think you do. I can't remember how VAR works in cups. It's so convoluted in the two different competitions that we have in England, but it's going to be a penalty. Yes, yeah, definitely a penalty. And uh, the man's lucky to have only got himself a yellow there for Exeter. And stepping up will be Mohamed El Neni. Smashing it in, keeper rooted to the spot. We've got a nice change side play against Exeter. Nice for them to show what they're worth in this. Some interesting names in there like uh, Mari getting game time, Sambula Conga, Maitland Niles, Smith Rowe, Martinelli all getting games as well. Throw in for Exeter here. Intercepted by El Neni. And there's the ball in for Martinelli. He's got a pace to burn. It's not a great ball over for Emil Smith Rowe, though, as we try to build on this attack and make it two goals to the good against Exeter. Here is Arneni again, pulling the strings from midfield today. Smith Rowe, wide for Kalazinac. Martinelli now inside for Maitland Niles, who pokes it in for 2 0. They're questioning the goal. We've got a lot of these already, haven't we? Let's see. I think it was a closer one. Disallowed. Ah, it's not 2 0 to Arsenal. Let's take a look here. Oh, it's just off. Exeter try to play out from the back and then stopped him for the long ball, which will be easily won by Pablo Mari. Laconga playing in to Maitland Niles. Pull it back to Smith Rowe for the tap in. Oh, I say tap in, it wasn't an easy one. There were bodies around him. But Emil Smith Rowe gets his first goal of the season. You know, I was I was one of those people that questioned Emil Smith Rowe, but I think that you watch his performances for Arsenal and he just looks he looks a player than he, Emil Smith Rowe. He will be at the forefront of this team in the future, no doubt about that one. El Nenny. We are playing some such slick football. You see some of the moves that we have put together and again. He's found Enketia in behind. It's not even just this game. Against United, against Burnley, we're playing such lovely football. And that's what I want to see out of Arsenal. You want, you want a classic Arsenal feel, don't you? Back to the early days of Wenger when it was all entertainment as Martinelli almost curled one in that far corner. We're into the second half now. I want to bring back that, the, the Wenger feel. There's all, oh, I think Hartridge is in trouble here. Yeah, it's a second yellow card. They're down to 10 men. No oh dear. They'll play the rest of this one with 10 men. And now Nenny is looking for Cedric Suarez. Here's Smith Rowe. Oh, so close from Smith Rowe. Yeah, we want to bring the feel good factor back. As Enketia is in behind and can bring back the feel good factor. Yes, he can. It's 3 0 now. Thank you to Eddie Enketia. Yeah, I, I want Arsenal to be back up in that top four. That is my personal aim for this season. Might be a bit of a stretch. But I think we've got the firepower up front to deliver a top four place. It's just whether we have defensively enough to uh, provide a top four place. Erdegaard on as a sub. Chance to score. Buries that free kick beautifully. Martin Erdegaard is off the mark for the season too. And it's been a very nice cup day out for Arsenal at the Emirates there's the Erdegaard whips in that lovely free kick there and it's going to be all over here we're going to win four goals to nil it's going to be a clean sheet for Leno two out of the three games have had clean sheets and there's some outstanding performances in there you've got Smith Rowe Kalasinac as well having really good games and uh, yeah we're into the hat for the next round of the cup as well and we'll see who will draw in a moment. But that is a, a very, very nice win there. And we've drawn Man United in the next round, because of course we have. What else would you expect? So very quickly now, I want to run through how we're going to do this. So, you see the games like Liverpool, Man United in the Cup. Key performances I am going to do extended highlights of. For the other games, say your Villas, your Watford, Norwich games, 
I'm going to break down and just show you the goals from those games and not the key highlights. Uh, unless there's like something major that you need to see, then they'll be added in. But it's so we can get through these games quicker, but you can still see the important bits and don't miss stuff. Because, of course, Football Manager is about the long haul. It's about the long-term saves, taking teams from a certain area and taking them to the top. And that's where I want to take Arsenal. I want to get through these seasons quickly. I don't want this to be a really slow burn series like my last FM series that I did in uh, FM 21. So, yeah, if you're excited for this, please do like and subscribe. And uh, I'm really excited for some more FM, and I hope you are too. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.